Hello, welcome back to the Groove Agent 5 tutorial series. Today we're dealing with percussion agent styles. They're similar in concept with acoustic agent styles in that you get many grooves in one and a lot of flexibility in terms of complexity and intensity and all of the stuff that we've seen in previous videos to do with acoustic agent styles. We just have a different interface. Whenever you load a percussion agent kit, if you load with patterns, as I've just done here, then when, if you select a pattern pad, you'll get the style viewer for the percussion agent. It looks different, it behaves differently. Let's have a look at some of its functionality. Right out of the gate, we can see that we don't have the dial that we do with the acoustic agent kit. And we don't have that ability to vary easily between main groove and fills and have auto fills. And all of the stuff that you get with a, a traditional drum kit doesn't apply to percussion. What we have instead are these eight individual substyle racks and we can plug different sounds into each one of these different kits and we can have any any number from one to eight so if i press play on this groove as it i was just basically randomly turning stuff on and off then you can hear these three different sounds playing you can turn any of them off so let's just have a look at the agogo -go for, for, for starters here's our complexity slider and our intensity slider. When I bring the second sound in, we have a different complexity slider and different intensity. We can also vary the tempo individually for each of these sounds. Now, groove offset is not to be underestimated. It's a really fabulous um, variant that basically gives you, every time you change one of these groove offsets, you're getting a new rhythm. So the amount of flexibility that you get with the different patterns that are being played in any individual percussion groove is immense with groove offsets. I'll get it running again. And I'll change one of these groove offsets and you're gonna get a new rhythm. Because now the congas are playing uh, they're beginning their pattern on beat three the go go is still beginning its pattern on beat one now even though we have a swing setting here we also have a global swing up at the top and i tend to use that more if you have different swing um settings for your individual uh, sounds it can be a little bit unruly. It can definitely be done. Let's set my congas out. But like I say, normally I will use my global for swing. We also have a global intensity. Bring the entire pattern down rather than the individual control that we've got over here. Let's have a look at this substyle menu, see what we've got going on in here. When we open it, you can see the currently selected uh, substyle. And can you see that this is in the complements folder? Now this bears a little bit of discussion because we've not dealt with complements yet. This is how Steinberg tried to tie the acoustic agent and percussion agents together. If I load a second kit into this slot over here, uh, and we'll load an acoustic agent kit, doesn't matter which one. What I'm going to do is head over to styles and search for acid. Now, can you see in the acid jazz styles, we've got acoustic agent styles, two of them, and then a load of percussion agent styles. That's why they're complementary. These styles have been built with those two different agents in mind, and these styles are supposed to complement each other. So if I drag the acoustic agent style onto the acoustic agent kit, now this, this style over here is the acid jazz style. I'm gonna get that running. And then head back over to my percussion agent. And I'm gonna set my sub styles to acid jazz 95 BPM. That's some 
bongos and congas and maybe a bit of cowbell action. Get that running. And those two rhythms are complementing each other. Now this isn't something I'm a huge fan of. I'm also not a huge fan of the agents not stopping when I click one of their stop buttons. That drives me absolutely crazy. Um, it's great if you if you just want to get a really quick, like instant sound. Your acoustic and percussion agents can both be tied together. You can see that the complements um, we have each of these like pre-built patterns that can be loaded into both agents. Make sure you load your acoustic agent styles into your acoustic agent kit and your percussion agent styles into your percussion agent kit if you're gonna do it that way. They, they don't cross, you, you, the, there's no compatibility between them. In fact, if you load the wrong style onto a kit, it'll just turn it into a MIDI pattern. It won't blow up. But the reason why I'm not an enormous fan of this is because my brain can't handle multiple agents and groove agents at the same time. It's It can be done, and in, in the episode where we talked about MIDI channels, you saw me split agents up onto different MIDI channels and have them all running independently. Absolutely, it can be done. And if you want to do it, this is one of the payoffs for you. The fact that you get these compliments is you know, a, a, a reasonable deal. But for the most part, I tend to treat them as just other grooves. I can't really see the need for tying percussion that tightly to acoustic kits. In fact, part of my love of percussion is that it just sounds so good all the time, regardless of pretty much whatever you put it on. Maybe that's just me being a philistine. But as far as I'm concerned, I can add any of these grooves almost randomly. Let's kind of, you know, I'll just kind of not even look at what I'm doing and just pick some, there you go, why not? Let's get both of those things running again and see if they sound even remotely interesting. Well, guess what? It's, it's kind of magic. I really don't overthink my percussion. I just use my ears and mess around with options until I find something that sounds good to me. Once you've got a rhythm you like, there's nothing stopping you dragging that MIDI pattern across into Cubase and there it's baked in stone. Any changes that I make to any of these dials is going to create a new MIDI pattern, pick that up, drag it across, and those two MIDI patterns are different. There's pattern one. There's pattern two, two patterns overlaid over the top of each other, not the same. Just a quick note about uh, MIDI patterns in Percussion Agent. Percussion kits contain an awful lot of sounds. If you turn this style into a MIDI pattern and go and head over and look at it, look at it in the pattern page, you're gonna be kind of overwhelmed by the number of options you've got available to you. I heartily recommend uh, Showkeys with Events as a reasonable option to, to, to go for if you're editing percussion patterns because it just brings all of the notes together and makes it much easier to deal with. One final mention, thanks to the colour scheme, it's almost impossible to see that there is a button here. So you can click random for different complexities within the, um, the sub-style menu. So we can randomize the complexity of the bongo, but keep a fixed complexity for the other stuff. So that can be useful. But to be absolutely honest with you, I tend to do most of my stuff manually when I'm dealing with complexities anyway. When we get when we go on to deal with automation, which is a pretty big topic in its own right, we'll see how everything that I've done, every one of these values, everything inside these style players can be automated and we can map um, knobs and sliders to all of these settings and have real-time control of them. So from a performance perspective, when you're recording this stuff into Cubase, it's really easy to, to have that level of fine control. And I prefer to have that 
manual control myself rather than click the random random button but there you are so that's the percussion agent styles dealt with hope you enjoyed the video found it useful if you did please consider subscribing hit notifications and then you'll be sure not to miss my next episode hope to see you then thanks a lot